Welcome everybody to our Spotlight series. I'm Kara Santucci and I am the CEO and founder of Glue. And I just wanted to tell you if you're not familiar with what the Spotlight series is, is that Glue is a platform to help connect and really increase visibility with nonprofits, freelancers, and businesses. And this is just an additional way for us to highlight some of the really great things that these organizations are doing in our community. And today I am so excited to have here Jennifer Bittison, and she is actually the board president of the Rockville Women's Center. So I'm going to go ahead and join her in. Hello. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being on here. I am so excited to learn more about Rockville Women's Center. Obviously, I'm very familiar, but a lot of people aren't. And before we get into that, why don't you tell us more about you and your background and how did you get involved more with Rockville Women's Center? Sure. Um, I actually grew up right here in Montgomery County. I went to mm -hmm. Montgomery Blair High School and um, I've always had a heart for women in crisis. Um, so that is what drew me here. Um, by day, I am a digital media strategist. I do social media website, things like that. And I also am uh, homeschooling my three kids now that schools are closed. Um, so I'm busy with all of that. Um, but because I have this heart for women in crisis, I really wanted to get more involved with RWC. And that started right out of college. Um, they did a fundraising walk and I jumped into that. And so I was not just supporting them myself financially, but also support um, recruiting others to support mm -hmm. the organization as well. And then I learned about their um, annual fundraising banquet. And so I started recruiting my friends for that and bringing them to that. And I was just so excited about this mission to reach women right in their moments of crisis. Um, so I asked the director at that time how I could get more involved. And that led to me becoming a board member um, and mostly what I've done there is a lot of, um, again, fundraising. Um, that's I, because I'm passionate about it. It's something I love to tell people about. So it, even though I never thought of myself as a fundraiser, it just comes naturally to me out of the passion that I have for the organization. So I've um, helped organize the annual uh, spring campaign, what we call the baby bottle campaign. We also mm -hmm. have um, an annual gala banquet in the fall. And so I've helped with that. We moved into our location, which is um, right next to Twinbrook Metro Station, mm -hmm. um, just a few years ago. And so I organized a community open house so that people in the community could come see where we are and what we're doing. Um, so that's mostly what I've done as a board member. And then last year I became president of the board. And so I work very closely with our executive director, Steffi Benjamin, in that role. Yeah, isn't that great how a passion can now lead into you're being on the board and being mm -hmm. a board president. That's a really incredible journey. Why don't you tell us more about Rockville Women's Center as a whole? I know that you touched a little bit on, um, you know, women in crisis, but why don't you give us a little bit more detailed background about them? Sure, we started in 1987 to meet women who find themselves unexpectedly pregnant and to see how we can serve them in that moment. Um, it's not something that, everybody can relate to, but I think all of us can relate to that idea of just being flooded. Like if you've ever been just terrified or just overwhelmed with emotion, that feeling where you just can't even think straight, you just want to get through that moment. That's where these women are. And it's such a vulnerable place where they're having trouble just being able to think straight and make the decision that they're going to feel good about in the end. And so that's what we want to be for them is a safe space, like an oasis where they can just come and share freely and be in a non-judgmental, caring environment where nobody is trying to make a buck off of them. Nobody has um, any sort of motivation to push them one direction or other. They just have a safe space to come. And so we offer them all three choices, um, what they could do with that pregnancy. We talk about parenting, we talk about adoption, we talk about abortion, and just they have all three options. In Maryland, they have all three options up through nine months of pregnancy. Um, with the laws that the way they are, but I think each one of them has pros and cons. And so we really want to give them a space where they're able to talk through those options and a place where they're going to feel affirmed and loved and not judged. Um, and we also um, provide all kinds of services to support them in whatever decision that they make. Um, all of our services are free, um, and that includes uh, pregnancy verification, STD testing, um, sonogram, counseling, mentoring, 
parenting classes, childbirth classes. We have a baby boutique where we have supplies for women who need them. Mm -hmm. um, and all of that is completely free to the women who come to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then just regardless of whatever choice they end up making, we are there for them both before and after. And it's just a place where I think everybody who walks away feels affirmed and supported in that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that you said that it's a safe space and judgment free because, you know, these women, they are going through challenging times and mm -hmm. a lot of them are making very challenging decisions and very difficult decisions that are personal to every single woman out there. And to have a place where you can go to to count on that I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be thought of differently. And to make that process easier, I think is really important. And that is what helps make a huge impact in this community because I think a lot of times people can obviously feel forced to be in one direction or another. Mm -hmm. And just to have a place that's just safe is really, is really great. And mm -hmm. you say that on your website or Rockville Women's Center mm -hmm. says that, and it says, we inform, you decide. Um, you know, could you tell us even more about what you mean by that statement? And some of it may be of what you covered, but just as a whole, when you, when you have that statement out there, um, you know, what are you really wanting to drive home for those ladies? All right. Most of the ladies who come in our door are, um, I mean, when I decided to start my family, I did it with my husband. We have three children that we planned as the best you can plan a family. But a lot of these women who come in are, do not have that um, that same structure. And so mm -hmm. for some reason or other, they're feeling very uh, challenged by their circumstances. And it could be, well, I'm in grad school right now, or I'm in high school right now, or um, perhaps their housing situation is tenuous and they're afraid that they're going to get kicked out or that their boyfriend is going to break up with them if they choose to um, have the child. Or maybe they're married and they already have five children that they're struggling to feed. And so all of these situations are are situations that we see and that we sympathize with and empathize with. And so we realize that this is not an easy decision for any woman who comes into our door. And so we do, we give them all three options. Um, this is what parenting would look like. This is what adoption would look like. This is what abortion would like look like. And we walk them through the pros and cons of all three of those. Um, and so I think a lot of these women who come in and they feel flooded, they feel like, well, the only option I have because I'm in school is an abortion. Right. Well, that seems like the easy way out, but it isn't always the choice that they wish they would have made a little bit further down the line. Um, yeah. But a lot of times they're just so scared and so mm -hmm. overwhelmed that they can't think through the decision beyond what today feels like. Yeah. So what is that going to feel like a week from now, a year from now to look back and know that that is part of my history? Are there, is that the choice I'm going to wish I had made? And so to be able to have the time and space to kind of think that through more long term, I think um, it's just something I really feel very passionate about providing that for them. And I, I know one of our board members talks about having had an abortion in college. And mm -hmm. one thing that she said to me years ago that has struck me and just stayed with me is that she wishes she had known that there were any other options mm -hmm. for her. Um, if there was any other place that could have told her that she had a choice other than abortion, she would have picked that choice. And so I think of her and that just keeps me driven to c continue to provide a place where we can support a woman no matter what choice that she makes in them. Yeah, because it is a very difficult decision. And obviously you touched on this earlier that you guys do offer a lot of different services and support as well to women, but that particular decision is definitely probably the hardest. And um, just again, knowing that you guys aren't pushing in any certain direction mm -hmm. or forcing your beliefs onto anyone. It is just a place where they can learn about those different options and then they can make that decision. And I think that is the key point to drive away from that is that it's not a place that's scary or they're gonna think, oh no, if I walk in there, they're gonna immediately you know, make me feel like I can't have one or whatever it is. You, you guys just give all the options and all the information and then they can make that decision. And I'm sure a lot of women were being able to make um, just decisions that they thought that weren't even available to them after mm -hmm. seeing you guys, which is which is really great. And I know that you've touched on this earlier, but 
I want the audience to know that this is free. You mm -hmm. know, this is not going to cost anything. So, you know, for all different income levels, we touched on some of the people, you know, types of women that came in that high school or just in different situations of themselves. But having a place that is free, you know, can you just touch again on some of those services that are completely free that help give flexibility to all different income levels? Absolutely. We have this amazing um, team of donors and some of them are going through real economic hardship right now and yet they're continuing to give sacrificially and I'm just so thankful for that but that's because all of us really believe in what we're doing and feel like this is a really loving response to people who are in a really tough situation. So um, because these people donate money we are able to provide all of these services without cost and also with no financial incentive whatever the decision is that a woman walks away with. If a woman walks into an abortion clinic um, no matter how professional that clinic is, the clinic is going to come away with more profit at the end mm -hmm. if that woman makes one decision or another. Mm -hmm. so we come into it with absolutely no financial incentive. Whatever they walk out the door with, we have the same amount of money. Um, so they can come and just feel like we are not looking for any incentive or any, um, any agenda there that they can come and just feel free that we are there to support them in what they um and what they and we talk about and their different situations. We're not trying to add to anybody's burden. We're trying to lift that burden for them. Yeah, trying to lift the burden, not add any. Yeah, and I think that's what, that's the big takeaway here is that, you know, you do, because we get the support from donors, uh, you're not, you don't need to have to charge. And thank you to all of your donors. If any of them are watching right now, thank you so much for um, being able to continuously support Rockville Women's Center because it is challenging times for everyone. And so just being able to be uh, having that sacrificial heart is is very is very grateful. I'm sure all the ladies that have been able to benefit from this organization are very thankful for that. So, you know, we've talked about all these different things. Why don't you just walk us through what someone can expect to walk in, um, you know, as a woman, if she walks in, can you just kind of take us through the process? Sure. One thing that um, amazes me is that our staff continues to come in and meet with these women now because we know that just because we are in this social distancing time that this need hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. um, so we are still open and available um, for appointments. If anybody feels like they need that, they can come in and you know, call and make an appointment and we'll make sure to meet them. But obviously during these times, it looks a little different. Um, we are taking all precautions. We're doing all this extra cleaning. Um, usually we would say, bring your friends and family to come support you in this. And instead we're gonna ask for no guests. We're gonna make sure that you're wearing a mask and we're wearing masks and gloves and we're gonna take your temperature on the way and just to keep everybody safe. So we're doing all that we can to pr um, protect our staff and also protect those women. But once they come in, they meet with our front desk per person and that person will you know, take, take the information they need, their ID, um, and obviously these are all medical protected records as well. So nobody's doing anything with that idea, but just um, getting the information that we need so that we can help them in their situation. And we provide them with, of course, privacy practices and um, what they tell them what they can expect. And then somebody comes back, we call her a patient advocate because really she's advocating for that patient. Mm -hmm. And um, that is kind of the person who's going to come alongside you for this appointment. And we try to keep each of these appointments to an hour because we really want to respect the time of the women who come in. Um, so that patient advocate um, takes her back and they have a little consultation. Um, we learn more about that woman and her situation. And also that's when we can talk with that woman about the services that we provide and also the three options that that woman has available to her parenting, mm -hmm. adoption, abortion. And so they go through all of those options. Um, and then we take her back to the restroom and um, then the woman's able to um, get the urine sample that she needs for the pregnancy test. And we have medical staff there in the facility. And so they do that pregnancy test. And while we're waiting for those test results, the woman sits back down with her patient advocate and they're able to talk some more. And then when those test results come back, the medical staff will then meet with the woman and talk about the results. And if that um, pregnancy test is positive, then um, we offer two services. We offer STD testing and we offer ultrasound. Again, both of those completely free to the patient. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we do that is no matter what choice that woman makes, those 
two pieces of information are going to be key. Um, um, both either direction she goes, whether she decides to move forward with the pregnancy or not. Um, so those are, it's very important information, um, no matter what decision that woman is going to make. Um, so after the ultrasound, um, we, the woman can take pictures with her if she wants to, she doesn't have to, but then they do talk about, you know, what the ultrasound reveals is that baby six weeks along is that baby six months along. Um, and your options are going to be very different. We're going to talk about the different kinds of abortion that are required for that size child, that age um, child. And um, so they're going to talk through all of that. Um, we also provide that woman with um, any medical advice that we're able to offer. If it goes beyond our scope, then we'll refer her to her doctor. We will also provide um, a list of community resources that we tailor specifically to the needs of that woman, whether she needs housing or a job or finances or um, whatever support we can provide, we will provide her with that. And then mm -hmm. she has a few more minutes to talk with her patient advocate. Um, we offer her a follow-up visit if she'd like it. Um, and then again, we just try to limit that all to one hour and we never want a woman to feel rushed, um, but we also right. be respectful of the time. Mm -hmm. I love that there's a patient advocate. So then that way there's someone that can help walk through that process with her and being able to um, just help articulate a lot of those different needs that she that she needs. And if it is hard for her to articulate it to multiple people, there's someone that can walk her through every step of the way um, so that she can come out of it feeling a lot of relief more than just more pressure. And again, mm -hmm. with whatever decision she decides to make, it's just being able to get all the resources that she can in order to make those decisions, um, because it is a it is a very hard decision um, to begin with. So, you know, with that, I know that you mentioned earlier about how you know someone on the board member, um, you know, recently or not recently, back in high school, had an abortion. But why don't you tell us like a success a success story of a patient that's walked in, and uh, you know, someone who's benefited from your services. Do you mind if I share two stories? Absolutely, we want to hear. Let me give you a recent one, and I'm going to kind of read it because I want to make sure I get her information correctly. Um, but earlier this year, a 20-year-old called our office, and she was terrified. Um, mm. She actually hung up on us because um, it was like more than she could handle. But her boyfriend ended up calling back a few minutes later. He said, "You know, my girlfriend's just crying. She's terrified. I'll call her Brianna. That seems like..." I'll give her a name. Um, that's not really her. Uh, so eventually Brianna got back on the phone and so we were able to talk with her and set up an appointment. Um, but she was saying she really did plan to get an abortion, but she agreed to come and talk with us first. And she just cried through her whole mm -hmm. counseling session and you know, understandable. I think probably a lot of women do, but she kept insisting abortion was her only option. Um, but we gave her time. We gave her time to think, to pause. Um, we, um, she said, I'm from a Catholic background and we gave her some time to sit there and pray and, and spend time with God. Um, according to what she believes, we don't force anybody to pray. Um, but that's what she felt okay doing. So we allowed her to do it. And then she came back to the sonogram room and she learned, um, that that baby was already 24 weeks along. Wow. So that's more than halfway through a pregnancy. Wow. And again, in some States, abortion wouldn't be legal in Maryland. It is. Um, so she still had all of her options available to her, but that's, that's a pretty large child already. And so she could see, um, you know, that baby's moving around. And I, I think it really started to change her heart in term when she saw that. And again, it's just information. Um, but once she got that information, I think her heart began to soften towards that child. So mm -hmm. even though she thought abortion was the easiest way out, um, having that information made her stop and think a little bit more about it. And um, so the following week, she returned with her boyfriend and um, she said because of the love that she had received at RWC and that support, she felt empowered. Um, mm -hmm. She didn't feel like she could, when she walked in, she didn't feel like she had any ability to choose mm -hmm. to parent that child or to carry that child to term. But because of the support and love that she had received at our organization, she felt empowered. And that's really what we want to do for women is to empower them with information and with mm -hmm. the ability to make a decision that they feel good about. Um, so that, that baby was born on December 5th and, um, we continue to stay in regular touch with that woman and, and her boyfriend and 
um, want to support them in any way that we are able to do so. So that's one that's recent. Um, I have a, a personal testimony, um, not me personally, but a friend of mine. So let me, I'll go back a little bit and say we started in 1987. And when I was um, speaking last year at a church about our organization, um, the pastor came up to me and he said, you know, I helped to start your organization. So back in the 1980s, this pastor, his name is Curtis, helped start this organization, start RWC. So put a pin in that. Okay. And in 19, when would that be? About 1997, a really good friend of mine found herself unexpectedly pregnant. And so she ended up going to RWC and um, getting the support she needed that she was provided with a listening ear and a chance to pray with the counselor since that was her background. Um, she also, once she decided to carry that child to term, they gave her maternity clothes, baby clothes, a baby bathtub, diapers, the things that she needed. And so she felt empowered and ended up carrying that baby to term. Two years ago, I was able to attend the wedding of that baby. Um, she is now wow. three years old and um, just so proud of, of watching that little baby um, who might not have been here today, just blossom into this beautiful, beautiful woman who just graduated from college this past week. Oh and um, I'm just so proud of her. But so I, I went to that wedding and she was marrying this fine, upstanding young man whom we had met at church. And in fact, he's the pastor's son. And in fact, her new father-in-law is Curtis, who helped to start RWC back in 1987. And so when Curtis was helping to start RDBC in 1987, he was investing in people, but he never thought that there would be a personal fruit that came out of that. Mm. More than 30 years later, his son is marrying a baby who is here today in large part because of the support that that mother got through RWC. Wow. And so it's going to affect generations to come because of the support, mm -hmm. the financial time and effort and love that he put into this organization back when it was first starting. And so I'm very grateful to know this child all grown up and also to see that legacy live on um, generations after this man put that effort in. Wow. That is really touching. Both of those stories. It just shows a testimony of just how you know, great your services are, but just that, that true impact. I mean, those, those two individuals didn't think that they had any other options. And then they decided to not only go to Rockwell Women's Center, but then have it come full circle on the second story. It's just absolutely <laughs> fascinating, honestly, to have that all come around. It shows that if you have a, again, going back to the passion for things and if something breaks your heart and you want to make a change, you need to go for it because you might be helping generations to come. And if he never did that, if he never followed that, those stories wouldn't be here today. And so everyone who may be watching this live or on playback, honestly, if you know anyone, any woman who is having any of these hard conversations that she's having with herself, just tell them to come here, Rockwell Women's Center, so that they'll be able to just, again, help inform. No one's going to push you to do anything, and no one's going to force you to do anything. It is just a place to inform and to be able to provide a place to have more options, and then you can just be educated on those things all for free so that you won't have to have any pressure of paying for absolutely anything. So... You know, again, it's such a great mission that you guys have. How can people help support you, um, especially during these really strange and difficult times with the pandemic? How can people support you right now? I know you mentioned in the beginning the baby bottle drive. Could you speak more on that in some other areas? Sure. We usually have two giant fundraisers this year. And because of our social distancing restrictions, we don't know what either of those is going to look like right now. Right now, we're trying to do a baby bottle drive virtually. Um, it doesn't have the same success as being able to see somebody in person. Um, so every spring, um, I'll go around to different churches and organizations that will have me and I'll share and other people will share our mission, our vision, what we're doing. And then people can pick up a baby bottle 
and fill it with change and bring it back. And it is kind of a way to start, it's about $25 worth of change, but start supporting our organization and learning more about it. Um, that isn't happening right now because all the churches in the area are closed. Um, also this fall, we are supposed to have two galas on a Thursday and Friday night. We have the location reserved and the dates reserved, but who knows, I don't know that 300 people are going to be in one room together. So we're having to look at creative solutions there too. So both of our major fundraisers this year are kind of in flux. And so best way that you know any nonprofit obviously needs finances, but um, if that is a way that you want to support us, the best way is to go to our website, rockvillewomencenter.com. And there is a donate button on the top right. You can use that to support us financially. Um, we also take um, material donations. If you wanna support some of these women who have chosen to parent, um, even in these times, we're still accepting and needing diapers, wipes, formula. Um, in times when we are less restricted, we accept some other items as well. So you can call the center and organize a, a time to make those donations as well. Sometimes people gather a group of friends and they pitch in for a car seat if a family needs that. Or mm -hmm. there's different ways that um, people can support us materially. And we also need volunteers. Um, we need people who will meet with these women. And once we're open to guests again, um, people who will meet with those guests and, and talk them through some of the stuff that they're dealing with as well. Because um, this is more than just a woman's decision. Sometimes, um, you know, the, the boyfriend is going to want to talk with um, somebody as well. We could use uh, an, another OBGYN. We could use another sonographer, nurses, like some volunteer positions that would serve in a medical facility. We also need mentors. If you would like to meet with a woman who is going through childbirth classes and parenting classes and talk her through some of the issues she's facing as she tries to navigate the world around her, um, that is a volunteer need that we have as well. So again, you can go to our website, which is rockvillewomencenter.com. You can email me. I'm happy to help you with that. Um, my email address is just jen, J-E-N, at rockvillewomencenter.com. And um, if I can be any support to you in, in supporting us one way or the other, I, I'd love to help you connect with the right person. Yeah, that was a lot of different opportunities. So I hope if you're listening, you can help on one of those, whether that's donating resources, like you said, for these women that are choosing to parent, being a mentor, uh, being a volunteer and helping in those ways just volunteering your time in that sense. Those were really great ways. And by the way, we will be posting all of this in a recap post tomorrow. So uh, everyone who's listening will be able to see just some of those opportunities that were mentioned. Uh, and we'll make sure to include the direct links to be able to contact you for to learn more. But is there anything that we have not covered today that you would like everyone to know about Rockwell Women's Center or did we hit the nail on the head on every single one? <laughs> I just have to give a shout out to our staff. Um, mm -hmm. I am just so impressed that they continue to go in. They don't have to, um, but they feel their job is essential to be there for these women right now because these mm -hmm. women are in crisis, whether or not we are socially distanced. So I'm just going to put a plug in for our staff and say how much I respect them and how much I appreciate our volunteers. We've got some amazing, amazing committed volunteers um, who serve faithfully. Um, some have served for over two decades and I'm just very impressed with the team that we have. Um, I could not be happier with the team that we have. So I am just grateful to be part of this organization, to be able to serve in any way I can. And I would love to partner with anybody else who feels like this is an organization that they'd want to serve um, alongside as well. Yes. Well, I uh, just want to second that. Thank you to you as well, along with your staff and everyone who is volunteering currently. It is it is a very big sacrifice right now to go out and continue to help uh, make these services run and have these services provided for all these women in our community. So it really is, again, just a testament to that you guys are dedicated to your mission and that it's more than, it's it's a passion. It's something that you guys want to do to help. It's nothing that you feel pressured to do. It's something that you want to do. And, and that is just, again, what shows just the heart of your organization. And so I, again, very much encourage anyone who's listening, 
please support them on all of their social media platforms. Why don't you go ahead and let us know where they can follow you guys, if you guys have any social media links that people can follow you to see all the great updates. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to remember that right off the head, but uh, <laughs> search for Rockville Women's Center. Okay. I know we are both, um, we're on Facebook. I think we're on Instagram as well. And um, but again, rockvillewomenscenter.com is our main website. Okay. So go to rockvillewomenscenter.com. We will be able to post any any other social links as well um, on our recap post. But overall, thank you so much, Jen, for your time. And I am so grateful to know you. And honestly, representing Rockville Women's Center is crucial during challenging times, but in general, it is impacting lives more than we could ever imagine. And so I just want to thank you so much for your time and coming on here. And again, if anyone's listening, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to listen in, whether you're watching this on playback or live. We are so grateful for every single one of you and tune in next Thursday where we will actually be interviewing Alpha Creative. So please, if you know anyone who wants to be featured on this, on this series, go to contact at letsglue.com. But until then, we are excited uh, to see you next time. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kara. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.